Hi, so what we are looking at is UK law, UK domestic law and Article 8. So what is linked to Article 8? Well, first of all, the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act 2000. So quite a mouthful, ripper. Um, this is to do with surveillance. Section 32, subsection 3 of RIPA says you can use surveillance if it is necessary. Well, when is it going to be necessary? It would be necessary in the interests of national security for the purpose of preventing or detecting serious crime and for the interests of the economic well-being of the UK. Again, interference must be exercised proportionately. And if you are unhappy, you don't go to court, but you can challenge this through a tribunal. And that was section 65. Investigatory Powers Act 2016 is an updated version of, of RIPA, and this is like a new framework to govern the use and oversight of investigatory powers by the intelligence agencies. So it deals with powers relating to them obtaining the communication data. Now, the Secretary of State and a judge must authorise any interception warrants. So you can't just listen in on people. Um, you can appeal against the decision if you don't like, you know, if they rule that it is lawful, then you can appeal. So what does IPA, IPA actually do? Well, it allows the hacking of phones and computers and access to, to data. There is a, um, a commissioner who is meant to oversee how the powers are being used and to ensure they are checked correctly. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's interesting the amount. It is called the Snoopers Charter, which we will come on to when we evaluate this. OK, the next bit of domestic law to be aware of that kind of falls under Article 8 is breach of confidence. So this covers situations where information is given in confidence with the expectation that it will remain private. So if the information hasn't yet happened or, or been released, then you could have an injunction to prevent its release. If the breach has occurred, so the information is out there, then action may be sought for compensation. So you're asking for damages. So in order to be successful for breach of confidence, a claimant must prove that the information was obtained in a way which gives rise to a duty of confidence. So for example, doctor, patient, your doctor exposes information about you. Secondly, it must have the quality of confidence. So it has to be something that is worthy of keeping confident. Thirdly, it can arise within an employment contract. So if that information is, is leaked, that is also an issue. Fourthly, it must be used in an unauthorised way. So this breach of confidence, um, it wouldn't be... Yeah, it's got to be something that is not allowed to happen. So a doctor is joking with their friends um, about a patient or, or just gossiping about a patient. Um, whereas a doctor who goes to a surgeon or a specialist to speak about the patient, um, that wouldn't be breach of confidence because they're doing it as part of their job. And then finally, the claimant must suffer a detriment from um, the breach of, of confidence. Now, there are some defences to breach of confidence. First of all, that the information is already in the public, in the public domain. If it's out there, then... Um, you can't claim or it is a defence, you can claim it, but the other party, the defendant may have a defence saying it's the information is in the public domain. Um, also, you may have got it wrong. The information was not actually confidential. So that is a defence. If the defendant claims that, well, this information by law, I can tell the, the other party. And then finally, um, if it's in the public interest to disclose the information, um, the person can do so. So, for example, at work, you are protected from your job if you whistleblow. So if you report um, a public body or your company for something like fraud or racism, um, then you can um, and you are sacked. Well, then you have a legal right to have your job back and receive compensation. You would win at an employment tribunal. So a couple of cases, perhaps just to, to talk about um, Von Hanover. This um, deals with Princess Caroline of Monaco. She was secret, secretly photographed with her children in a cafe. And the European Court of Human Rights said that this was intrusive. There was no public interest. Um, it's also worth noting that children have a greater right to privacy or a private life than, than adults. 
case of Mosley, this was the Formula One um, boss and there was a story published in the paper about his use of prostitutes. Paper said the public had a right to know, but the court actually said there was no right to know. So this did breach um, Article 8. And then Douglas versus Hello. So wedding photos of Catherine Zeta-Jones and Michael Douglas were published by Hello without um, their permission. They had actually already sold the rights to OK magazine. And again, the court looked at is 8 more important, Article 8 more important than Article 10? And they refused to grant an injunction because they said that the information is already out there in the public domain. Douglas and Zeta Jones were prepared to have publicity because they had a deal with another magazine. So that is what to look at with domestic legislation. So Ripper, IPA and breach of confidence. Go and watch the evaluation of Article 8 and domestic legislation.